Welcome back, everybody, for another episode of the Blue White Illustrated Recruiting Podcast. It is March 13th. We are one day out from the start of spring practice. Obviously, the team takes a big focus these next five weeks, but recruiting is also absolutely massive. Sean Fitz and I will get into some names to know here that are going to be on campus here tomorrow, March 14th, for the opening practice of the year. We'll also look back on my story earlier this week on a few articles that we're considering in the weeks and months ahead. Let's get it started. Hey, Fitz. What's going on, man? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. It's only, it's only March Madness. It's only spring practice. It's only junior days coming up. So we go from February, where there is legitimately nothing going on, to fast forward in mid-March. So I'm excited about that. It was too much to fit in, the, in an intro, but we got here. So we're, we're good to go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I would say a lot. Fun weekend, man. Uh, always a fun weekend, but really fun when you see Penn State basketball going on a roll like that. So close. They were so close. I mean, obviously, Purdue takes that big lead. They get a couple of little breaks there at the end. And, uh, you know, what did they lose by two? They lose by four. I think, yeah, they didn't get a foul shot off at the end. So they lost by two. But uh, I always kind of thought like, like once they beat Indiana, right? Like everybody was just happy. Even if they lost that game, I think most Penn State fans are happy with, you know, regardless of how the championship played out. But would have obviously been really cool to see them win a Big Ten championship as well. Yeah, it, it's funny because like, it's not funny, but like how often is Penn State going to find themselves in that position? You know, a shot to win it, which obviously the right shot, you know, to, to take it to win it against a Purdue team like that. But uh, that was that was that was a pretty insane run. And then when you look at like Rutgers being left out, you're thinking, yeah, you felt good Penn State being in it after the first win, the second win, whatever. Um, but like they needed a lot of what they took or what they got. So that that was uh you know, that was an, a nice little silver lining there. They did what they had to do and more, but at the same time, it's like they 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 really crushed it. I mean, they it, it was not a situation where you were feeling that they were like, you know, David Goliath type situation, maybe against Zach Eady, who was ridiculously huge. And uh, he is Goliath. In there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it, was, it was like me playing on an eight-foot rim. I loved watching it. It was great. Um, but it was, uh, it, it was really, really a great, great watch. Great for the program. Hopefully they – do what they need to do to keep Micah Shrewsbury in town um, because, you know, that's uh, that, that's the foundation for something. So uh, hats off to those guys. Excited for this week. Not excited for the 955 tip on Thursday night um, because we will have been watching a lot of basketball that by that point. We know what that means this time of year. Um, so but uh, no, it's a, it was a really good run and it's, it's not over yet. I'm excited for the for the for the rest of March. Yeah, Penn State fans, if Sean, if you're trying to get in touch with Sean and I. I don't know, 2 to 4 p.m. on Thursday or the following day, there's a good chance we're napping because there's no way we're going to be able to stay up till 1230 <laughs> with our kids' schedules and things like that. But uh, we're go obviously, we're going to watch the game, but uh, I don't know. I mean, my kids are at like 630 the next day, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, I'll be up for it. Um, I <laughs> caught some crap on the board this weekend from Bleed. Uh, but yes, I did watch all the games, pretty much all of all of all the games that I was uh, capable of doing. And it was it was entertaining. It's it's good. It's 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 fun when there's the, that team is never down and out. And it's you know, I was watching uh, you watch Lundy and all of a sudden like he's putting up 30 footers. And it's just that that's fun basketball to me. I mean, it's not it's not the prettiest sometimes, but it's fun basketball, especially when they're hitting shots. Uh, we're four minutes in. We haven't talked about recruiting. Uh, Penn State, as you mentioned, starts spring practice tomorrow. Um, so what they're going to do, they're going to open things up for visitors. Of course, when you're talking about uh, weekday visits, it's mostly guys from in-state. There are a couple guys from out of the region uh, taking uh, midweek visits. And then Saturday, the, the floodgates really open up. You're going to post a story here in a minute um, on bluewhiteillustrated.com. Remember to check that out. Um, and that's going to be uh, it's going to be a big junior day weekend, essentially on par or close to what they bring in in January. So Penn State getting back from spring break, starting pre spring practice and hitting the ground rolling. Uh, Ryan, I know you've put you've put together that list, so I'm not going to rain on your parade. So what have you got in terms of guys to watch, especially tomorrow uh, as uh, as practice starts on March 14th? Yeah, so. Couple, couple interesting names. I mean, the one thing I'll say about the list overall, and this is why we're trying to promote you guys to get this site. We have over forty guys already confirmed uh, between March fourteenth and March eighteenth. 
Uh, we've been working hard on this list over the last four, five, six days. So, uh, of course, March 18th, with it being a Saturday, is going to be the big day. Uh, that's going to be the one where I think a lot of fans will recognize a lot of those names, a lot of top regional guys that can make it up to campus pretty easily. Uh, but for tomorrow, March 14th, we're looking at a handful of guys. I think Davion Hall, wide receiver out of Nebraska. Didn't see that one coming. A player from Nebraska coming to Penn State on a Tuesday. That's I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Uh, making the trip up to watch practice. We can break him down in a second. A couple others, though, uh, stand out to me. Eric Lee, safety from Camden, New Jersey. Uh, he's playing down at IMG Academy now. Another player who holds a Penn State offer. We'll see how that progresses in the months ahead. And then Jamari Powell Watson, I believe his last name is, uh, from Baltimore City College out in Baltimore. He's got some quality Power five offers, a wide receiver, 6'2", 185 is what he's listed at. Let's let's try and get some measurements on him in the days ahead. But uh, Maryland, Pitt, North Carolina, Wake Forest, Boston College, Syracuse. I think Vautech's another one in there. So he's got the the quality regional offers. Now, I don't believe he had Virginia, which is – I'm always looking for Virginia offers now with wide receivers to see, you know, who's that guy that Hagan's been after that Penn State wasn't really on originally. Uh, so he doesn't appear to be one of them, but, you know, obviously he's – Higgins has been here long enough now that uh, I'm sure he's found some prospects that uh, you know, he can pursue. And the other thing, too, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. It, now Higgins is he can get the big fish, right? Like that was a, that was supposed to be the issue uh, of Virginia. You know, can you get the the better guys? And I'm not saying Powell Watson's one of them necessarily, not one of the top ranked guys, but uh, it opens up his his net uh, of guys that he thinks he can get maybe compared to the time at Virginia. So we'll, we'll see how things progress here. Maybe Davion Hall is going to be one of those guys. Baltimore City College. I believe, is that an Adrian Coxon reference? There is. It wasn't that the school he played at. Um, that was a Ooh, long time old ago. Names that may have been <laughs> I like can't remember where you these guys, man. Uh, that was a long, long time ago. Um, but yeah, it's, that's a good list for the city kid. It's it's tough to get exposure for those guys sometimes. So to see those regional schools on it, and to see like North Carolina on it, uh, you know, there's there's certainly something to work with um, there as they try to cast a wide net. You mentioned Davon Hall. Uh, you know, uh, Micah Gilbert going to come up this weekend. Yeah, that that receiver board, we still don't have a huge grasp on like the top tier guys, but that's a wide net that's being cast because there's a lot of guys coming in from a lot of uh, a lot of different places. So uh, we will continue to monitor that. But uh, I would say a good group for uh, for the first day of spring practice. They're going to have some more guys on on uh, Thursday, the 16th, and then Friday rolling it into the weekend. So um, very important week for Penn State to to sort of get their feet wet, get running again, get up, get get back into the flow of things before this weekend hits. Um, so there's a lot to a, a lot to like in the coming week. Before we get to the weekend, are you ready to leave the corporate rat race for the American dream? Well, looking for a side hustle while you're working on your current job, you wanted to diversify, build wealth, and or leave a legacy, check out My Perfect Franchise. Uh, our sponsor, Andy Ludecki, is a franchise consultant with over a, a half a decade of experience placing people like you with the perfect franchise to manage. His services are 100% free, and he's here to help you if you have any questions about business ownership. Check out the Blue White Illustrated message board or email Andy at myperfectfranchise.net to get started today. Thank you, Andy, for sponsoring the recruiting show. Um, and also check out bluewhiteillustrated.com for uh, recruiting lists, plenty of recruiting stories, plenty of content, things like that. Uh, thanks for Andy for supporting the things that we do. So we ask that you support the things that our people do. So um, moving on, as I mentioned, on bluewhiteillustrated.com, you can check out lists, you can check out interviews, you can check out all kinds of stuff. Of course, you can follow our social channels at Blue White Illustrated. You can like this video subscribe to this channel, all that kind of stuff. It's very helpful for us. So we just ask, uh, we plead that you do that. Um, plenty of stuff on the site over the weekend, uh, plenty of stuff on the site uh, in the coming week. As we mentioned that weekend, this uh, this this upcoming weekend, it, it's a big one for Penn State. Massive. And by the way, Adrian Coxon, City College. Good call, man. I, I It was 2011. I had just started at the time. I don't, I don't remember those days, but that was a good one for you. That, that's uh I'm impressed by that. But yeah, I, I would expect, I mean, right now for the weekend, we're not going to get on all the names. I got, I don't know, uh, about, about, a, about a dozen scholarship guys. It should be, and it might get a little bit bigger. Uh, and then we, we got a handful of guys too who have Division One offers uh, that, that Penn State hasn't offered yet. Some 2025 names too. I, the one guy I will say, the uh, the State College running back, Sean, do you know, is it Deontay Sheffy? Deontay Sheffy, yeah. He's, uh, he's a good one. I mean, 
Yeah, yeah. Like, I, 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 I've heard a lot about him over the last couple of months, but I didn't really watch him. I mean, I didn't see the Oklahoma offer, and you know, I was watching his film the other day. Uh, impressive, impressive. He's impressive, it, and it's funny. I mean, you you take a look at running backs that are at that stage in their recruitment or at that stage in their high school development. You can never tell when a guy is going to, you know, eventually become a Saquon Barkley, a, a guy that's just at the top of his level when he's picking up offers like that on that level. Um, you know, we, we remember Jordan Houston out of Virginia. Penn State offered him as a freshman before anybody else, and it looked like he was primed to do some big things. And all of a sudden, it kind of stops growing, not as explosive anymore. You know, there's a lot of things that go on. Uh, the kid that went to Syracuse last year from Virginia, uh, whose name is is escaping me, is kind of in that mold too. So. 2026 running back worth getting excited about right now, but it's something to monitor uh, for the long run. Cause Sheffy, you, anybody that you talk to about uh, state high football is like, man, you, you feel that Sheffy kid. Uh, yeah. He's, he's pretty good. So I'm excited to see his progress, excited to see it up close and maybe get out to a game or something next year to, uh, to, to check him out in person. Cause he's a, uh, he's a good player, really good player. Yeah. One thing to clarify, I said, Oklahoma offer. He's about to visit Oklahoma in two weeks. I believe it's going to going to come Penn state this week and then go to Oklahoma. It doesn't have an Oklahoma offer yet, uh, but he does have Virginia tech, Cincinnati, Syracuse, obviously a state college guy. Uh, Penn state is going to take their time on that stuff. They are incredibly impressive uh, at recruiting running backs. So they said, a you know, Jay Wan's obviously set an incredibly high bar there, but certainly a name to recognize. Uh, as Sean said, check out the, the, the list. It's up on the site. Now, if you're, if you're listening to this, or watching us on YouTube. And uh, I think people are going to be pretty happy with uh, the names coming into town this weekend. So it's going to grow. Uh, I'm going to be still working over here over the next couple of days. But uh, as I said, probably about around a dozen or so scholarship guys and a handful of quality power five guys uh, who Penn State hasn't quite offered yet, but certainly guys that I, I assume a handful of them, maybe they'll, they'll camp or whatever it'll be. They'll, they'll get offers here uh, in the months ahead. Okay, Sean, while we're on state high, I know we like to keep it local. Sometimes Uh 2025 linebacker, Michael Gall is also a pretty darn good player. Uh, he actually grew up legitimately five houses away from me before they moved away. I remember him running around in a little Patriots gear or Patriots Jersey when he was a little kid, mm -hmm. he has developed into quite an athlete all around athlete. He's got a handful of division one offers as well. So there's another uh, homegrown linebacker that's uh, looks to be an FBS power five player. There's a reason State, State High made that run this year, man. They, they've, they've got a pretty quality team, of course. Uh, Scott's, Scott's son's going to Fordham, right? John, yeah, John, John Scott's, Scott's going to Fordham. Uh, I just saw today that uh, 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 Jonas Dazi's kid is going to Wagner. So, yeah, there's uh, there's quite a bit of talent in this in this area. Um, not all of it's Penn State-level talent. It's it, it's weird because you've got scholarship-quality guys, maybe not Penn State-quality quality guys, but – there's that there's that jump between the, the Penn State quality scholarship guys and then the uh, scholarship quality guys and then the Penn State walk on kids. But they always seem to have a couple state high kids uh, in the program or coming through the program. Um, obviously, you you want to keep those kids home if you can. But, uh, you know, Wagner, uh, Fordham, you know, really, really good schools. Great schools. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's uh, it's it's phenomenal. To watch these kids uh, develop, especially when you're like right here. So mm -hmm. anyway, they won 13 to one this year, man. Lo yeah. Lost to Harrisburg in the state semis. Uh, of course, I mean, whoever was going to win that game was going to run into St. Joseph's prep like every year. But uh, yeah, great year for State High. So, all right, transition a little bit. I did a story last Thursday on future RPM picks up for consideration. Uh, Sean and I, leading up to this, man, we, we were trying to figure out some guys to make some picks for. Uh, on three, did a, a RPM day on Wednesday. Sean and I are always pretty conservative with that. So this was kind of our way of um, making it clear, you know, guys we feel in a good position with, but we also try not to be the ones who put in really early picks and uh, change them, you know, because I think a lot of people like you look at when you work in this industry, you look at the RPM two different ways, right? It's like a log them really early. We can change them later. It doesn't matter. And then Sean and I have always kind of in the ballpark of when we log these, it's because we we feel pretty good about something. Would you agree with that, Sean? Yeah, I would agree. Um, it's uh, sometimes guys don't go by the wind. Uh, we don't really try to do that. We try to first off dig out, dig out, and report before we put in a pick. Um, sometimes you get caught at the end, and you're just kind of like, okay, maybe, maybe we don't have, we might not have time for this. Um, but that's that's kind of the way that we work. So I think it's it's more about uh, hanging back, doing the right, doing the right reporting, and then going from there. The the pick always supplements the reporting, not the other way around. So yeah, there's Correct. some guys. Um, 
there. I put in a pick for uh, William Satterwhite last week. I don't think that's a surprise to many people because you already had a pick in. Um, that's a guy that Penn State would like to get back on campus in April um, and maybe seal the deal there. Um, but but in terms of 2023, excuse me, 2024, um, it's an odd time. It's just an odd time to have a crystal ball or excuse me, uh, <laughs> old, old habits. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's a hard time to have an RPM day because like, guys are just setting out on their spring visits. Spring visits are the next step before official visits. So like if you had a guy that you wanted to make a pick for, it was, you probably already made it. Like uh, you made it for Satter white. You made it. I, I made one for Mari Gaines, which you jumped on. So like if you're in that realm, you know, it's kind of like you've already been in there. So uh, not too many new picks to come about, but there are guys certainly under consideration and, and guys that we're watching for visits for the next couple of weeks. Um, I did a deep dive the other day on John Mitchell, a player that I really, really like a lot um, in Jacksonville. He's going to be at, at Penn State uh, a couple of times before. Um, I guess I he'll, he'll be at, uh, what am I trying to say? A, a couple of times before his senior season. Penn State was on him early. Penn State does this with cornerbacks. They do a really good job evaluating them. They get in early. Um, sometimes they get swooped out from underneath of them. Sometimes they land the guys. But these out-of-region cornerbacks, Terry Smith does a really good job of identifying his targets, and John Mitchell is one of his top targets. So um, that's a guy that obviously not ready to put in a pick for, but I think Penn State's doing really well for. Um, he went to Florida State last week, and I think the Seminoles are going to pose a very big threat, of course, being down in Florida, um, although being on the other side of Florida – it's, it's different. You know, it's, it's tough to get those guys. You know, when you, when you take a look at Cam Miller, um, who by the way has connections to, to John Mitchell, when you take a look at Cam Miller and his final couple of schools, it was what Penn state Rutgers. There was a couple other other ones in there that weren't Florida was kind of in there. Florida was bit. like lukewarm because of the way that they recruited him. So I think that this is a situation with Mitchell where Florida state is going to be actually on him. So like to beat, that's the difference right there to beat Florida when they're lukewarm on Cam Miller is one thing to beat Florida state who has a lot of momentum right now, who is doing a really good job of rebounding after the first couple of years under that regime um, to, to beat them for a Florida kid might be a little bit different. Right. And that's the whole reason I'm not putting one in yet, but I mean, I, so I interviewed Cavante Campbell who by the way was Cam Miller's trainer that that's the tie there. Kevante Campbell is the defensive back coach at Mandarin High School, uh, which is where John Mitchell plays. But he's also a trainer in the region, the Jacksonville region. Cam Miller, of course, was at Trinity, but he trained uh, with John Mitchell's assistant coach. So there's there's some close ties there. I mean, Campbell called uh, Cam Miller like his second son or something like that. I mean, they're, they're very, very close. So because of all that, he's become very close with Terry. And, uh, you know, they visited. I mean, I, I believe Campbell came with Mitchell for, uh, I think, I think it was no, he came with Cam for a June visit and then he came with Mitchell for the whiteout, the, the whiteout last year, which a, one other guy, too, we got to mention is Antoine Belgrave Shorter. I don't know. I don't I don't I get the vibe. Mitchell's more interested in Penn State than than Belgrave Shorter, but he's another guy who like Belgrave is is not rated yet. I don't think by um, Charles and on three. I'm, I'm checking it right now. I'm sorry. He has a high three star grade. I think that just got changed recently. Um, but he long story short where I'm getting at with this is those two are going to visit in March. And John Mitchell already has an official visit set with Penn State for June. So let's like one like when we get out of that March visit, you know, which is going to be at the end of the end of March for these guys, I'll be able to get a better read. I feel like is is Penn State really going to be a school that he's considering to come north for, or is this you know Penn State's a nice school, I like it, but I'm staying down south. So like that's the main reason I'm holding off for an RPM pick there right now. But like. You know, Penn State was the first official visit that the guy set. I mean, there, there's a reason for that. I mean, he came all the way up here on his own dime for that whiteout visit last year, uh, w which stands out as well. So, I mean, this is, in my opinion, this is this is maybe Terry Smith's top guy that's realistic, uh, you know, compared to Bryce West, for example, in Ohio, or Aaron Scott, for example, in Ohio. Like, those guys are all high on the board, but I think they're they're trending towards the Buckeyes. I mean, you, I think you would agree with that. What about, like, Terry on Nichols, too, Cincinnati kid? I mean – I think he's realistic, but I don't know. I got to I got to see him visit a little bit more. Yeah, and I think the the way to judge these in the next couple of months is do they have official visits set? And for John Mitchell to already have an official visit set, I mean, that tells you where what they think about him and also the the reciprocal interest there because it's tough to uh 
you know, it's tough to give away those weekends in June to schools that you're not heavily considering. So I, I think Florida State and Penn State are the top two. It's about staying power. It's about relationships. Penn State has done a really nice job getting in with John Mitchell. He has been, for the most part, a pretty good secret. Um, but I think the word's getting out. He's a guy that's that's really good on film. Uh, he's, he's got athletic measurables to back it up. Um, I think Alabama offered, Auburn offered. Uh, there's a lot of big name schools in there. Not to say those schools are going to, you know, jump and take him and put him at the top of their list like Penn State has him. But you know, it's going to be tough to keep that one under the rug for a long time. So um, that's an interesting one. Um, I agree with uh, with some of the other guys that you mentioned, but there, there's questions here. I mean, Xavier Gilliam, not a guy that we've talked a ton about. Uh, Maryland defensive tackle. Uh, from Columbia uh, that Penn State just offered not that long ago. Um, and he's I don't think he's in that top tier, but he's a guy that we we just keep hearing more about. And there's some guys that kind of fade off and level off in terms of of interest and in terms of people that we talk to talking about them. But Gilliam seems to be on the rise in that manner. For sure. I mean, he just picked up an offer. Was it the beginning of February and the end of January, something like that? I mean, it was it was recently. We're talking weeks ago um, before John Scott left. Now, of course, that that's that's a big part in this too, right? I can't make a pick for a D lineman right now without a D line coach here because that coach, while he doesn't have all the power uh, on who Penn State will pursue, he's he's going to have a big say uh, in that process. But the the couple things with Gilliam, one, they need defensive tackles in this class. And while quality is very important, quantity is going to be important too. I think that's something uh, that we're going to see, or at least the goal uh, would be to maybe get as many as four if they can. And the region's deep enough for, for that to happen. So what, I mean, when I look at, when I look at Benedict Ume and Jordan Thomas, Jared Smith, Ernest Willer, a couple of those guys, like those are certainly the top guys, but it's impossible for me to see Penn state landing all of them. So you're going to have a few guys who are a little bit more raw, a little more, we, we say project, which isn't always the fair way to put it. And to me, Xavier fits in that mold. A couple other things too. His coach, Penn State alum. I don't want to, I don't want to overthink that, but I think it's a really important point because I think that's a big part of why we keep hearing about him because I think his coach is pretty excited about his top player getting a Penn State offer. You know, he's already visited. He's going to visit again here in a couple of weeks. So I just think that that part of it and, and, uh, the excitement of the people around him and being able to get him to Penn State consistently visiting in March or April and June, uh, it's going to play a big role in this. So we got to see who the D-line coach is. We got to see how that board shuffles a little bit. But to me, like out of, out of the guys I picked here, I think Xavier Gilliam is the one I think is most realistic uh, in, in the months ahead. Again, need to see the new D-line board, but I, just from talking to other people, man, they seem to think that this guy's going to be a take no matter what. Yeah. And, and, and you mentioned four defensive tackles, like you have room to work with that. As you mentioned, uh, guys, you don't like to say the, the word project, but that's what they are. Like the, these defensive linemen that come in uh, six, three, two, six, or whatever, you got to build them up, but you have to have the athletic base to work with. And, uh, you know, six, three, two, sixty to turn into six, three, two, ninety five, three hundred pounds. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't always work, but it, it, it has worked well in the past for other guys as well. Um, so I'm interested. One to thing, see Sean, just I, I want to stress one thing too, real quick. I apologize. Uh, just Penn State scholarship board. You know, we're talking about numbers. Like, just if we're looking at the the current roster, Devon Ellis is a fifth year guy. Hakeem Beam is a fifth year guy. Kazai Izzer is a fourth year guy. Jordan Vanderberg, Vanderberg, excuse me, fourth year guy. Devon Townley, who flirted with the portal this past year, third year guy. So you have five guys there who realistically could be out of this program at the end of this year. So that's why well, I just think four is, do I think, do I see them all being gone? No, but I do think four is possible. Yeah. I, I think when we talk about the concerns at defensive tackle, which we've talked about a ton this year, like not only is the concern for this year in terms of a lack of experience, lack of size, whatever, but like there's a bigger concern next year. So portal is going to be huge. And that's why we talk about not necessarily just adding a one year rental in the portal, uh, I don't know why I made portal sound like that, but not just a one year rental, um, but a guy that maybe has two or three years left. We'll see, uh, see what happens with that. And I, I don't know that all those guys that you mentioned are, are going to be out the door, but like that's going to be a situation that needs some retooling. The next guy that's going to come in as the defensive line coach is going to have a lot of work to, to rebuild that. Cause let's be frank, their numbers, like the, the way that they've stacked numbers in that class uh, or excuse me, in that position has not been great. Like it's been, kind of scatter shot so and it's and it's a hard position to do it because you might take four in one year you might take one in the next year just depends on what's out there and how athletic those guys those big guys that can move are out there 
Um, but they're they're banking on this class being a big foundation to what they're doing at defensive tackle over the next five years. All right. So the other two guys on this list. <laughs> yeah, this is all you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Keelan Adams. We'll go with Keelan before we go to the other one. So look, Keelan Adams puts out this top four, top five, right? It looks really good for Penn State. Uh, who were the, who were this? I mean, Pitt, I, th- I forget who the schools were on. Pitt, I'm, Virginia, I'm like, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, sorry. It was uh, in one, Virginia Tech too, right? Virginia, Virginia, yeah, Virginia yeah. Tech was one of them. Anyway, it looks great for Penn State. Here's the issue, guys. He's going to pick up a lot more offers, and he already is. Who, who were the last ones? Alabama, Auburn, Texas A&M. I think Tennessee was the other one too. I mean, Sean, I'll throw this to you because you've kind of done the, the background on this a little bit more than me. But it feels like he's hunting for a certain school. And then he's going to also take some visits down south as well. So, like, what at one point I felt very good about Keelan Adams. I, I And I kept him in this argu- article to kind of explain why things have changed more than, like, I'm going to put in a pick for him. I kind of wanted to get it. If anything, I'm kind of trending away from putting in a pick for Keelan Adams. But I kind of wanted to explain how I see this recruitment shaping up especially because of, you know, another school in the Big Ten that I think you should talk about. Okay, so in February, puts out a top four, and it's Penn State, Pitt, West Virginia, Virginia Tech. So you're looking at that four and saying, Penn State should win that battle. They, they absolutely should win that battle. Um, you know, there's a lot going for it. He's been up for a few times, whatever. Um, that, to me, seems like a strategic quote unquote, final four, uh, top four, whatever. Um, and it worked because you mentioned Alabama, Auburn, Tennessee, Texas A&M all came in with offers. There's, there's schools that do that. There's schools that, you know, will evaluate a guy and maybe he's not a guy for you, but it's a slowdown offer. It's, it's one of those situations where we want to see you at camp. We want to see you in person, whatever. Um, so we'll throw you an offer and, and maybe get you to slow down, not make a decision. Um, excuse me. The one here that you and I keep looking at is Ohio state. I think the kid wants to go to Ohio State. Uh, he's uh, he's got some connections to Ohio. Um, it's it, he hasn't been shy about talking about uh, his his desire for an Ohio State offer. My question is 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 he on that level? And that's not an insult to the schools that have offered him, and that's not an insult to Penn State, who is is pursuing him as a top target. It's really really hard to break that ceiling of an Ohio State re- receiving prospect right now because they're going after the cream of the crop, the top of the top. Um, so it's, uh, I think that's very, it's an interesting dynamic. I, it, it's a situation where he's got all these offers. I still wouldn't be shocked if he went out and camped for them. Like that's uh, a situation that I could see playing out in the summer. So, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's tough to hear if you're a Penn state fan, because Penn state's just not on that level in terms of recruiting wide receivers. Not many schools are. Um, but, uh, I think that's one of the situations that you have to sit back and, and, and wait for and watch, um, Penn state. In the meantime, keep building the relationship. Keep uh, keep that up. Keep him coming back to campus if he can. Um, you know, getting back for a spring game, getting back for or scheduling an official visit for early June. Fill those June marks or fill those June weekends up so he can't get out and, and camp for the, for some of these uh, supposed elite tier schools. So be interesting to see how that one goes. But I agree with you. Like if it's just down to those four, I'm all in on Penn State. But it's not. It's it's not. That's not the situation. No. The other thing, too, is he told us Alabama, Auburn, Ohio State, Tennessee, West Virginia. Like, those are the schools he wanted to visit. And as of now, I've seen no signs of him getting to Penn State. Now, with that said, he's he's yet to meet Higgins. Like, that's something I think has been talked about. Like, oh, Tidewater, you know, uh, there's going to be a close did. tie. Yeah. And even and even even I fell into that trap originally. Uh, but, like, there's no real big relationship here. Uh, the more I've dug on it, I mean, they've never met each other. They've had a handful of talks before. Uh, he got to Penn State, but th- there's not this deep, deep relationship there that, uh, you know, I think from the outside looking in, you, you would assume was there. So, all right, uh, you got to go take your puppy to the vet. So we got to get to the end of this one. But I can't end this uh, without talking about Quentin Martin, who was the other one I put in this article. Look, I just I just think uh, right now, I don't know how you could not pick Penn State. The, the question is just how much will NIL factor into this? How hard is Ohio State going to pursue him? Uh, does Ohio State like him as a true running back? That's a question I need to figure out because Quinton seems to want to play running back. He seems pretty set in those ways. Penn State's perfectly fine with that. You know, they just they just want to get him on their roster. Uh, and I mean, he's going to play running back if he gets here. Don't get me wrong, but they just they'll take him no matter what at any position. So just to, but it does feel like this is going to be a Buckeye Nittany Lion battle, and then NIL too. Like, how much does that factor into this? Uh, I, I've never had people from his side 
like outwardly talk about big numbers or anything like that. So like part of me thinks NIL could be a little bit overrated time, but then part of me thinks, well, enough people talk about it. So there needs to be some, there's something there. Right. He's so I just it's go ahead. Going to be a part of it. Like, uh, I mean, it, I agree with, I agree with what you're saying and, and you can talk yourself out of that sometimes, but like there are so many things that point to this being a, essentially a business decision because he treats himself as a business. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but it's just a, it's a different approach than we're used to seeing. So like, I, I think that that's going to be part of it. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily a situation where he's going to put himself out to the highest bidder, like th not like a, you know, eighties SMU type bidding war type thing. Um, I think it's a situation that can set him up the best. He's a, he's a really bright kid. He's got some people around him that are trying to, to point him in the direction that not so much for the next four years, but for the lack of the cliche for the next 40. So uh, that's, that that's admirable, but I think it's going to be more about the package, more about the entire um, you know, what's, what's best for Quentin Martin in the long run, you know, than than just like, here's hundred thousand dollars come here, whatever. Um, so I think that that, okay. I think that that's what we're getting at when we say NIL is going to be big in terms of like that brand, he's building a brand. He is doing what um, they've been taught to do in that 2024 class is build your own personal brand. And he's doing a really good job of it. Right. The the only two things I'll add is just Terry Smith, J1 Sider, they are consistently spoken incredibly highly of. I feel good from that perspective. I need to I need to dig more on Ohio State and just how strong that relationship is. And that's something we'll do in the months ahead. And I don't want to overlook the Anthony Specka factor. And I know, you know, friends and you know, that stuff usually gets overplayed a good bit, but there is a really close friendship between those two. And uh it's something that that should I mean before before Specka committed, or like even before last July, like Specka came to campus like four times and every single one of those visits, you know, were, were him tagging uh, with Quentin to come up. So there's a close relationship there. Uh, I think it'll it'll help. I don't know if it's going to it's going to be the end. all be all. But right now, just when you look at visits, uh, when you look at how hard Penn State's pursuing and you look at the effort, you know, right now, I don't know how you cannot pick Penn State, but I'm not putting the pick in now for a reason. <laughs> OK. That's fine. I do have a running back to watch, though. You know, 2025 running back Keandre Barker uh, from originally from Arkansas, moved to Texas. Um, he's going to visit here in April. He's, like I said, a 2025 prospect. So not getting too far ahead of the skis here. Kid really likes Penn State and Penn State really likes him. So like I, I talked about Sheffy earlier, you're not sure how these guys are going to progress. I think Penn State would take him now and not think twice about it. So uh, Keandre Barker, definitely a name to uh, file away. Not so much, uh, well, I guess, yeah, for the next month and then for for beyond that. So I think Penn State's in a really good spot right now. All right, Fitz, you got a puppy you got to take care of. I have baseball practice tonight, by the way, people. Uh, I, I didn't even get to the end of this. I got 40-some 40 40 some practices over the next four months for T-ball. I don't know what I signed myself up for. Uh, but I need to go, uh, I guess, mentally prepare myself for what's coming here in the next four months. But anyway... Next next week, we got a lot to recap. Um, join us then. Uh, for Sean Fitz, I'm Ryan Snyder. It's another BWI recruiting podcast. We'll catch up with you next week.